So one of the ways that we can take the SI base units and make them more convenient for very specific applications is by using scientific notation. So for example, let's say that I wanted to measure the size of something extremely small, you know, like a molecule, for instance. Well, I could measure that in meters and I could say, all right, well, I have 0 0.000000001 meters. And that's the size of some molecule. And um, I think you can um, trust me when I say that that is kind of a pain and you don't want to have to do that. So um, what we can do instead is we can say, all right, well, um, what I want to do is not have to write out all these zeros every time. So I could instead write this as one times 10 to the negative nine meters. And so by writing it as one times 10 to the negative nine meters, um, that first of all, makes it less likely that I'll make a you know, copying error. If I write this down, I won't like accidentally add or remove one of the zeros. Um, it also means that if I go, you know, dramatically smaller, like let's say instead of an atom, I want to um, look at the size of, you know, uh, an electron. I want to, you know, characterize how well we know that maybe I would have to have many, many more zeros and it gets no more or less convenient to use scientific notation, no matter how small or how large the number gets. Um, even easier um, is I can make this um, easier to say by using one nanometer. Um, and now I have a unit that is more practical for the application that I was using because um, it's actually of an appropriate size for these measurements. Rather than trying to use meters, which are obviously way too big to measure molecules, here I could be using nanometers, which is a lot closer to what I actually want. Okay, so let's talk about these two things um, individually, the scientific notation and the prefixes. So the scientific notation, if I um, write out an example, will always look something like 3.21 times 10 to the fourth. Like this is a pretty standard scientific notation. Okay, so how do I know to write that instead of like 32.1 times 10 to the third or something? So this um, number that goes before the exponent here, this 3.21, this is always going to be between 1.000000 and 9.999. Um, and the reason for that is because um, by always being really consistent with how we write it, two different people will write the same scientific notation. If you were allowed to write 0 0.321 times 10 to the 5 or 32.1 times 10 to the 3rd, different people would come up with different ways to write it based on how things were going. So that's one thing. Um, another is um, we always want to use 10 for this power here. Um, Sometimes the notation that people use can lead to a little bit of confusion. When we write scientific notation, we always want to do 10 to some number. Um, and then this number up here should always be an integer. So it can be positive or negative, that's fine, but we never want to have some sort of decimal. Like that would be, I think, pretty weird if you wanted to do that anyway, but just so you know, um, that is the rule. Um, okay, so um, what about the prefixes? So there are a whole lot of prefixes, way more than is really reasonable for you to memorize, but there are a small number that are very common, and I do think it's important for you to know these. So the common prefixes are the following. Okay, and I'll use meters as the example here, just so that I have something to attach them to. So um, if we're doing large numbers of a unit, then we can do, for instance, um, kilometers, so um, K, which is pronounced kilo. So you can say kilometers. Um, kilometers is the only one that we often change the emphasis. Otherwise, um, it's usually kilogram, um, kilonewton, kilowatt. Um, we're usually pretty good about this. And that represents 10 to the 3. So 1,000 of something is kilo that. Um, and then another one that we can do is mega. So megameters, um, which is just a capital M. And that represents a million, 10 to the 6. Another one is giga, so a gigameter, which is not a very commonly used unit, but it's perfectly acceptable, is capital G for a prefix. Um, and that's a billion, 10 to the nine. There are also some units for smaller, um, or some prefixes for smaller units. So a millimeter is lowercase m. So this is you know, some evidence that you have to be really careful about capital versus lowercase. We do use them to mean different things. Um, and that is milli, M-I-L-L-I, -L -L and that's 10 to the minus three. The next one is micro, which we use this Greek letter mu. It's essentially a cursive U, but with a little tail at the beginning. So a micrometer, um, and like I said, mu is the prefix. Um, if you're typing, it's okay to just use U instead of mu um, for convenience sake. Um, that doesn't lead to any confusion. Um, so that's a micro, um, 10 to the minus six. And then the last one that I'm going to want you to know is nano. So nanometer, um, N, and that's a billionth, so 10 to the minus nine. Now, like I said, there are a lot more um, that are less common. So centa, for instance, but centa is typically only used for centimeters. Um, it's perfectly okay to use that for other things, which typically don't. Um, and there are ones um, for tenths and 10 times and 100 times. Um, again, I think it's a little silly to get bogged down with those when you can just say 10 meters instead of a decameter. But again, um, they do exist. And there are also much larger and much smaller prefixes, which you, know, you may be interested in looking up, but you don't have to just for the sake of this class.